Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good day. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today the topic of this video is pipe network. Hadi cross method. So at the end of the lecture, student should be able to find flow rates in a pipe network using Hadi cross method. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, well... Okay, for this lecture, for a complete explanation, uh, please refer to textbook and a handout given in WhatsApp group. Okay. Um, basically, what is Hardy Cross method? Uh, this method is used to determine the flow rates in a pipe network. So pipe network uh, is a network with three or more branches. Okay. So iteration method is used to find Q. So we will use Excel for computation. So I hope by now you are already familiar with iteration method. Many models have been developed using Hadjik Cross method. So for example, from this article, this is quite recent. Uh, this article was published in 2019. So it shows that Hadi method is still used by many engineers nowadays to compute flow distribution in pipe networks. So you can have a look at this article later. I'll give this article to you. Okay, what to do in this Hardy Cross method? So, step one. Uh, you identify and label the junctions and loops. In step two, you assume Q based on information given. Uh, this is in terms of value and also direction of the Q. In step 3, you calculate head loss. For this uh, head loss, only major loss is considered. So major loss is from friction loss. In step 4, you calculate delta Q. So you stop this iter the iteration when delta Q is negligible. So then you will have final Q. So only 4 steps in Hardy Cross method. Okay, step one, let's see. This is to identify and label the junctions and loops. Okay. Uh, so you have this problem. Okay, this problem is from the example. Um, so in the textbook. So let's uh, find the loops first. Yeah. So this is, this can be considered as the first loop. And this is the second loop. Okay, so you can label these pipes, yeah? Okay, so this is considered as A. You name this as A. And then here, you name it as B. Okay, so the direction is, this is the, en the entrance and it will divide it into two direction, which is A and B. Okay. Okay, so in the first loop, there will be another pipe here. So you call this pipe as pipe C. Okay, so in this case, you already complete one loop. So in the second loop, okay, uh, so when you do this loop, make sure it is uh, in clockwise direction. Okay. So you have the second loop. So you start with this pipe. So you name this part as pipe D. And then, so you have another pipe here. It goes into this direction. And this is pipe E. Okay. And You also have 
One last pipe. This is pipe F. Okay. So it actually it really depends on you. You can decide which pipe you want to label using what letters. Okay, so this is the way I label my pipe. Okay. Okay, let's see. After you identify, identify and label the junctions and loop. So what is junctions? So the junctions is, okay, so this is the first junction. The junction means, okay. So uh, when the flow is coming from this direction, so it will divide into two pipes, okay? So this is what you call as junction, okay? So, okay, this is enough for this part. Let's see the next step. So, the next step is assume Q based on information given. So, the Q, um, there are two information. Um, okay, let's see first how it explained. Okay, at, it, at each junction in the network, the sum of the flow into the junction must equal the flow out. Okay, what goes in? must equals to what goes out. So let's say if you call this as junction 1, so what is entering into junction 1 must be equals to what is coming out from junction 1. Okay? So in this case, um, 1.2 must be equal to flow into uh, flowing into in the pipe A plus flow moving in pipe B. So because just now I put this as A and I put this pipe as B. Yeah? Okay. So the fluid tends to follow the path of least resistance through the network. Therefore, a pipe having a lower value of K will carry higher flow rate than those having higher values. So this is common sense. Um, senang cerita macam ni. Dekat laluan mana yang paling tak ada halangan, dekat situ lah paling besar Q. So it's common sense, right? So finally, if the flow in a given pipe of a circuit is clockwise, Q and H are positive. If the flow is counterclockwise, Q and H are negative. So, just now I drew this as this, right, for loop 1. And this is loop 2, right? So, this is clockwise. When it goes following the clockwise, this is positive. But when it goes the opposite of clockwise, then it's negative okay so we move on to okay this is just the title so we move on to this step two how do we do it do this okay step one you did already step one so just now you identify the loop so this is loop one and we have um loop two right and you label this as A, B, and this is C, and this is D, and this is E, and this is F, right? Okay, so the direction that you determine is like this. And then, okay, so the direction is depending on the loop, okay? Okay, so this is, this flows like this. Mm, this is to the bottom, downwards. And this moves to this direction. Okay. So now, we want to assume Q. Okay, we want to estimate Q. But first of all, uh, in order for you to estimate Q, you must be aware of 
what are given in the question. For example, this is given 1.2 cubic feet per second is the flow coming to the network. Okay, so we have another one. This is 0 0.3. The flow coming out from this junction, from this node. We have one more here. Oh, sorry. This is 0 0.6 coming out from this node. And finally, you have up here, given, this is 0 0.3. So whenever you want to uh, uh, assume Q, you have to make sure that um, you take these, what are given, into consideration. So I'll see you in the next video and I will explain how to estimate Q. See you.